This is sample questions number six. So the sample questions. We have a mass with a spring and a damper. Okay. K and C. M is 600 kilograms. K is 62. And C is uh, 6. <coughs> okay, so you've got your mass spring damper system. It then says that the car is travelling at high speed and at time equals zero, the driver applies the brakes such that a constant weight transfer of 150 kilograms is applied to the front axle. And so we have a force that's being applied, <coughs> which is equal to 150 times by 9.81. Okay, there's a weight transfer of, of uh, about 1,500 newtons on the front of the, uh, on, on the on top of my system. And the question says, ignoring any influencing forces from the movement of the rear axle, determine an equation that defines the complete displacement of the front of the car, i.e. both the transient and the steady state solution. Sketch a plot of the frequency of the response with appropriate values labelled. <coughs> and so we have a system with an apply a constant force being applied. So my equation of motion for this sort of system, mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx equals f naught. That's my equation of motion, and I can go through and solve it. Now, I could, um, I could go through from initial conditions and find it, or I could look at my equation sheet and think, well, I know this is a constant force, and I know my, um, my, uh, my um, solution. Um, I've got a general solution here. Which I can I can uh, use. Okay, I've got the general solution, which is given is the, the damp general solution. So my for a rectangular step forcing function, I know that my solution is going to be e. Sorry, x equals e to the minus zeta omega naught t, and I have a one cosine omega d t plus A2 sine omega dt, okay, plus F0 upon K. That bit there is my complementary function, okay, and that bit there is my particular integral for this particular case. And now what we've got to do is we've got to go and solve for A1 and um, A2. My initial conditions are in fact the rest conditions. Okay, x of 0 equals x dot of 0, which equals uh, 0. And so x of 0, my displacement, this term is going to be 1, e to the power of 0 is 1, and then we have a1 times by 1, plus A2 times by 0, so that disappears, okay, plus F0 upon K equals 0. It's quite clear that A1 is going to be minus F0 upon K. For the velocity, for this term, the x dot term, we need to take the derivative of this equation with respect to time. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and do that, x dot. Okay. Now we have to use the product rule, okay, and the train rule, and it becomes a little bit complicated, but it's not too bad. This term is going to be replicated in here, e to the minus zeta omega naught t. Okay. And then we've got minus 
omega, sorry, zeta, omega naught, times by a1 cosine omega d t plus a2 sine omega d t plus minus a1 omega d sine omega d t plus a2 Now, the reason it's quite long compared to this is you've got the product rule because so you've got two functions here that vary with respect to time. Okay, you've got your uh, decaying exponential and you've got your sinusoid. Okay, now the product rule says that um, you take the, if you've got two functions, f of t and g of t, then you have the, you have the derivative of f times by g plus the derivative of g times by f. Okay, so here's my, um, so there's my, uh, my, uh, one function. Okay, the derivative of that is this times by this term. Okay, so that's my f times by g. Okay, and then obviously my derivative of uh, of, uh, of g, this this um this bit here. Okay, is over here. And that's times by f, which is that bit there. Okay, so that's how that works. And I can rearrange that e to the minus zeta omega naught t and what we're going to do is I'm going to group the sine and cosine terms together so here I've got cosine omega d t and that's multiplied by I've got this term minus zeta omega naught times by a1 and then over here I've got um, plus a2 omega d okay and then over here I've got sine omega d T. and I've got obviously this term minus zeta omega naught a2 okay minus a1 omega d Now it's quite clear that if I stick in x, if I stick in t equals zero for this equation, this becomes one, this becomes one, I have minus a1 plus a2 omega d. This term becomes zero, so that disappears equals zero. Okay. Yes? The solutions will be up in Rockford. Yeah. Okay. Now we know that A1 is minus F0 upon K. And from that, you can see quite clearly that A2 
So we have a one up here. And a two over here. And what we do is we take our a1 on our a2 values and we stick them back into our general equation. So x z to the minus zeta omega naught t minus f naught upon k cosine omega dt minus zeta omega naught with omega d f naught upon k sine omega dt plus f naught upon k. And I can rewrite that equation in a slightly nicer form down here. Because there's an f naught upon k term in each of these uh, terms, I can take that outside, and obviously this is only multiplied by the sine and cosine, okay, the, by the decaying exponential, and so I end up with this as my function. It's quite clear that we need to find omega naught, okay, we need to find zeta, and we need to find omega d. Omega naught is root k upon m. Well, k we know is 62 kilonewtons, and m we know is 600 kilograms. So we have 62 times 10 to the 3, and m we know is 600. Okay, so from, from up the top, k is 62 kilonewtons per meter. M is 600 kilograms, so omega naught is root k upon M, and if you do those sums, that's 10.165 radians per second. Zeta is C upon 2 root mk. My C up top was 6,000 newton seconds per meter. Okay, and M and K we've looked at before. And if I do those sums, I get a damping ratio of 0 0.4919. So it's quite high damping, which is what you'd expect with a car suspension system. On my damp natural frequency, we've got omega naught 1 minus zeta squared. That's 10.165, 1 minus 0 0.4919 squared.
and the damp natural frequency is 8.851 radians per second. While we're at it, we'll work out what F0 is. Uh, Kinder Newtons. And it's also quite nice because we've got, in here we've got a zeta omega naught, and here we've got a zeta omega naught. I'm going to solve for that as well just to make life easy for me. Okay, if I do those, I get, um, so obviously zeta is 0 0.4919. Omega naught is ten point one six five. Which is quite nice. So I take my values, I plug them into my equation, X of T. F naught divided by K So this could be simplified down, we can work out what these various terms are. X of t is <laughs> That's our solution. That's our exact solution for this particular case. And the uh, question asks for a plot as well. So let's just draw a general plot down here.
So my plot is going to be an oscillation that decays quite quickly. Something that looks a bit like that, okay. 0.237 is my um, uh, my settling point, okay. <clears throat> and then my natural frequency, sorry, my period, which is this point to this point, this distance here, is t, and that's 2 pi divided by omega d, which is obviously 2 pi divided by 8.851. And this one I haven't actually calculated beforehand, so we can do that. <laughs> okay, so let's go through the question. We've got a mass spring damper system essentially with a step forcing function being applied to it at time equals zero. Okay, we've got our various terms for m, c, and k. There's my equation of motion. My general solution from the equation sheet is that we know that we've got a damp system, okay general solution from the equation sheet can answer be this. We need to apply the initial, in the initial conditions. There are initial rest conditions. Okay, if you do x of, x of 0, so stick in 0 for time, we've got 0 in here, that becomes 1. 0 in here, that becomes 1. 0 in here, this becomes 0, so that disappears. So we end up with a1 plus f0 upon k equals 0. So therefore a1 must be minus f0 upon k. To get x dot of 0, we need to find the derivative of this with respect to time, which is down here. <coughs> so you apply your differentiation rules, and you get this. We've got the product rule in here going on, and the chain rule. Okay, and like I said, I can rearrange this equation to become this equation in terms of cosines and sines. That's useful because when I stick in 0 for time, I know that this bit is multiplied by 1, and this bit is multiplied by zero, so that disappears. <coughs> so x, x dot of zero is this term, okay, which is equal to zero. I know what a1 is, I can find a2, and you go through the process and you get a2 is minus zeta omega naught and omega d times by f naught upon k. I then take my a1 and a2 terms and I plug them back into this equation, my general solution, okay, down here. So I plug them in there. I rearrange to make it look nicer because there's an f0 upon k here, an f0 upon k there, and an f0 upon k there. Well, I can take that outside. Okay, I get f0 upon k times by 1, which is this one, minus, then I've got my exponential, this one, okay, and this one. And that obviously that minus turns into a plus in there because I've got the minus outside. So now I need to go through and find my various terms. So there's my natural frequency, 10.165. There's my damping ratio, 0.49. That's quite high damping. And there's my damp natural frequency, 8.851. For f0, it's 150 times by 9.81. So like I said, 1.472 times 10 to the 3. And just to ease the calculations, I've worked out what zeta omega naught is because that features here and it features here. So I just thought I'd do that while I'm at it. Plug the numbers in, you get this equation. Do some final bits of sums, you get that, which is your amplitude. Okay, then you've got your natural frequency here, and then you've got a bit of sine, uh, 0.565 times by sine.
And so if you um, plot it, it looks a bit like that. There's your net settling point. As time goes to infinity, okay, then um, this term is going to drop to zero. So you've got that term times by one. Okay. But in the meantime, you've got a sinusoid here, and that's obviously decaying at quite a rate. So that's, that's gives you that decaying. That's question six.